Welcome to the Portland Culinary Podcast on Portland Culinary Radio. I'm Stephen Shumley, your host. Super excited about today's episode. We are here in a restaurant that is about to be. <laughs> I've got um, Marika and Justin Thompson. Good morning, you guys. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Okay, so we are in the St. John's neighborhood. Um, you guys were a food cart. You're making the leap to brick and mortar. And uh, this March, you're going to be opening up Pai Ku, a new restaurant. Must be pretty excited. We're very excited. Definitely. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're right here um, in your space. Uh, and so I see tables. I see chairs, I see all the stuff, and in the next few weeks, magically, voila, this will become an amazing brick-and-mortar restaurant. Yeah, That's the hope. <laughs> all right, make sure you're right on the mic, Marika. you got to be very close, because you're soft-spoken, so you got to be really loud. Okay. All right. Um, so, Pai Ku, uh, you're going to be opening the restaurant in uh, March 2018, but you start out as a food cart. When did the food cart open? That was back in May of 2014. Nice. Okay. And um, where was the food cart at? It was at Kruger's Farm Stand on Lombard. So there's a food cart pod there right here in the St. John's neighborhood. Yes, it uh, is. Right across the street, uh, my friend Brian has a, um, a really good Lombard House uh, craft beer bar there. Yeah, Brian's a great guy. He comes get and gets food fairly often. <laughs> I believe he does. <laughs> He's probably sad that you've, uh, you've shut down the cart and you're opening a restaurant. Yeah, although he was pretty positive and, you know fairly friendly about it. Good job, you guys. Hopefully he understands. (laughs) Oh, oh, he knows what it's like to make the leap to be self-employed. He's very supportive and understanding, yes. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see him here. Um, Actually, I already have. (laughs) There you go. He stopped by the other day. Oh, see, exactly. That's the kind of guy, and that's kind of the way the Portland culinary community is, exactly like that. All right, so you highlighted um, in your food cart, you highlighted uh, pies primarily, savory pies and sweet pies. Correct. Uh, but now that you're expanding, you'll warm the menus, you're going to add sandwiches, you're going to add some soup and salads, and you're going to add breakfast. Yeah, well, we've actually been doing breakfast for quite a while, but we're expanding our breakfast menu. Okay, well, let's talk about through the menu. Start off right with breakfast. I know you, you mentioned doing breakfast, so, uh, like you had so, had and have some really good hashes at your food cart. Yeah. Have hashes here in the restaurant. Yes, we do. So talk to me about some of these hashes, because they're pretty, really, they're really stinking good. Yeah, so one of our most popular hashes that we did at the truck was the bacon potato hash. And we've been getting Nootski bacon, which is a bacon from the Midwest that's supposedly the best bacon you can buy in the country. So yeah. we're very happy about that. We never even bothered to tell people that, that we were serving them the best bacon in the country. Yep. <laughs> Meat, cheese, and bread um, uh, is a, uh, a sandwich shop here in Portland. And they did a special sandwich for me, Portland BLT Week last year. And they used Nootski's bacon. In, oh, did they? Yeah. And it so was you've phenomenal. experienced it. I've yeah. experienced it, yes. So phenomenal. we'll be serving that at the restaurant. So we're excited about that and we're adding a wild boar chili hash to the main menu which used to just be a special at the truck so that's good we'd run out of that really quickly whenever we would put it on as a special so that'll be on the menu all the time Mm -hmm. until it runs out every day because everybody has to have it (laughs) well maybe (laughs) (laughs) yes okay and then uh any chance you can have a vegan hash we sure are as well as we'll be continuing our veggie hash which has mushrooms and peppers and onions and pepper jack cheese Awesome. That sounds amazing. Um, and uh, I know you guys do a lot of really good stuff for vegans. We'll get to in a second. So it's nice that they, you know, vegans can have come and have a nice meal. Absolutely. Well, and Justin was a vegan chef for a really long time. So he has a lot of experience. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and ha- any biscuits and gravy by any chance? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I've had your biscuits. They are phenomenal. Well, thank it's you. It's not fair that you guys can make good pie crust and good biscuits. That just seems not fair at all. Well, there's that thing called butter. <laughs> Happiness is meltedbutter.com. I own that. <laughs> okay, and uh, omelets, you're going to do a lot of omelets. Uh, tell me about your Italian omelet. Yeah, that um, that's one of our big sellers, and we'll be using Olympia Provisions sausage on that with provolone, parmesan, peppers. It comes out really nicely. Ooh, that sounds amazing. And why Olympia Provisions? Why pick them? They put out amazing meats. They seem to really care about their product and they're local. Yep. It's really nice. No, they're phenomenal. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful people. Great company. Okay. So breakfast is great. I love breakfast. I'll have to come for biscuits and gravy. That'll be phenomenal. Um, but now let's talk about lunch. We're going to get to the pies because that's like this in my head, the star of the show, but you're going to have some sandwiches for lunch. Someone's not sure they want a pie for lunch. Um, so tell me about some of your sandwiches. You want to say Justin? <laughs> You've got this. <laughs> okay, so uh, sandwiches. We've got a venison sandwich, which we're super excited about. That's going to be a lot like a Philly cheesesteak, but with our slow-simmered venison. 
There's going to be cheese on there, pickled onions. It's going to be delicious. Okay. We've got a curry chicken salad sandwich, which uh, we did a lot of curry chicken salad at the truck, and we would always sell out of that. We could never make enough of it. So we'll be continuing that, hopefully in bigger batches. Um, an Italian sandwich that has soppressata, salami, ham, uh, fabulous cheeses. And let me guess, that's Olympia Provisions, so Prasada. How did you know? Oh, wow, that's going to be an amazing <laughs> sandwich then. <laughs> it's it's going to be delicious. Now, will that have any, any oil on it at all? Uh, Absolutely. Oh, yes, fantastic. Okay, I, I, my mouth is watering already. Okay, now, uh, my friends that are vegans, will there be a vegan sandwich on we'll the menu? Definitely a vegan sandwich, a veggie sandwich, and I have a feeling our specials will be including some fun vegan and veggie sandwiches. Oh, that's too. fantastic. Okay, now we're, now we're to the pies. Um, we're going to talk about sweet pies, we're going to talk about savory pies, but before we do that, so Paiku, it's P-A-I-K. K-U, right? Correct. Where the heck did that name come from? Well, we have to give credit to our son, Samwise. He came up with the name. We all love pie in our family. Is his middle name Cam G? No, it's not. Okay, all right. (laughs) It's not, and it was before the movies came out, so we felt, you know, it was totally fine at the time. Um, I think think Sam, what would be totally fine? Samwise is an amazing badass name. I think it's fantastic. Well, the funny part is that Initially, before the movies came out, everybody hated it. And then, really? Well, they, well, all right, hate might be a strong word, but. They're like, they oh, that's certainly, odd. Yeah, it was odd. And then once the movies came out, then we got the compliments. Oh, no, I grew up with Tolkien, <laughs> so I would have loved it. I thought, man, you guys are geniuses. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, so Samwise gets credit. Samwise gets credit. Um, Yeah, we just had a lot of fun coming up with haikus at home about pies. And actually, we've had customers write haikus for us as well about pies. And they probably still can. They still can, and please send them. So you you like... Haikus at home. I almost <laughs> said paikus, and so he thought, "Well, have fun with it. Combine the two paiku." It's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, that's it. Well, and it was between that and the crusty pirate, which I was I, not okay with. I lost. I lost out. <laughs> I'm, I'm from a marketing and brand perspective. I'm very glad you lost. <laughs> the crusty pirate just yeah, sounds. Yeah, you're not the only one. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Um, so uh, savory pies, you do a lot of different savory pies. We're going to talk about a couple of them. Uh, you do my all-time favorite savory pie. Chicken pot pie? Chicken pot pie. I love yeah. it. It's That's my comfort food. You know, oh, just nice. get that 79-cent one and bake it, you know, when you're just feeling I, bad. Yeah, well, you can come down here and have maybe a, much a better, little better than 79 What do you mean a little better? Cent. I've had your chicken <laughs> pot pie. It is, like, off the chart fantastic. Well, and will I be able you. to get a glass of wine with that? They sure will be able to. Oh, yeah, because yeah, to me, a chicken pot pie and a glass of wine, that's the ultimate comfort food right do, there. Yeah. Or a glass of bourbon or oh yeah oh nice i like it see now and now I'll, I'll, I'll some of the pies later i'll tell you the ones i'm gonna have bourbon with okay so chicken pot pie what's another savory pie we do uh easter pie now i'm gonna eat that in a second aren't i you sure okay are. so we'll save that and tell people easter pies and people that haven't heard of it okay? okay you got it we do uh venison shepherd's pie Oh, and that is so good because your mashed potatoes are so incredibly amazing. And I get to eat that as well. You do? Oh, I'm just, I'm the happiest food writer in Portland. <laughs> okay. And then uh, what else? We have a vegan pot pie. Is that like real vegan crust? It is a real vegan crust. Yes. And I've had it. It's a really good vegan crust. No, it's, no butter allowed. No butter allowed. And it's still amazing, which is phenomenal. Thank I have great you. appreciation for people who make really good vegan food and you guys do. Well, thank you. And then you'll probably have lots of other savory pies as, you know, things come and go, but those will be some some of the main Those stays. are the staples. Yeah, although we do a lot of specials. We have a lot of fun with uh, like a pastrami Swiss pie. and yeah. Nice. Okay, so um, now your sweet pies fall into two categories as I've, I've figured out your menu, you know, watching over the years. You do seasonal pies and inspirational pies. That's fair. So your seasonal pies are, oh, strawberries are out. We're going to make a strawberry pie or peaches are out. We're going to make a peach pie. Yeah. Whereas inspirational pies are, hey, I feel inspired to make this crazy one today. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to put it. <laughs> okay, so tell me about some of the seasonal pies that, you know, you've made in the past and you'll probably most likely make again in the future. Yeah, so we do a lot of apple pie, especially in the fall. Now, will I be able to get cheddar cheese on that? You sure can. So yes. have you? We won't make you beg. Yeah. And Justin, <laughs> have you ever had? Have you knew that's a thing? Some people think I'm not. So like you can't. No, put... no, it's it's delicious, and and it is something that yeah everybody box at until they try it. So and I I noticed you know the pies are not yet on the menu, but you know I'm gonna hope if I come in some morning for breakfast, there's a leftover one little leftover piece of apple pie that I can say, can I have that day old pie with some cheddar cheese on it? Because to me that and a cup of coffee and some scrambled eggs is a phenomenal breakfast. That sounds delicious. Okay. <laughs> so what other uh, seasonal pies? Yeah, blueberry gingers. 
one of our favorites. Ooh, um, that sounds really good. A little bit of sweet and tangy going mm-hmm. on at the same time. It's, yeah, comes out really nice. The uh, Marionberry Port is one I look forward to all year for sure because you almost don't even need to add that much sugar when it comes to perfectly ripe Marion berries. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And uh, Blackberry Cabernet. I think there's a trend here with the the port and the Cabernet with the <laughs> with the dark juicy berries. Alcohol. <laughs> so blackberries and marion berries aren't those the same berry? Not not quite. And if you want to come over here sometime in the summer, I'll show you the difference. No, I'm I'm aware, but people don't realize. <laughs> and like some people, they also think that chickpeas and garbanzos are the same. And there's no way, mm-hmm. garbanzos are way better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding on that one. Okay, and then um, so and then you'll just have lots and lots of other seasonal pies as things come around. And oh my you, gosh! Because yeah. you've done that, but yeah. um, those are some of the, the highlights that you do every year. For sure. And then uh, now, tell me some of these inspirational pies. Well, one that seems to just keep popping up that I never seem to get sick of making is the mango blackberry pie. Is that the one that I have right yes, here? Yes, we brought you that. I can't wait to eat that. That's okay. a fun one. With ginger and coconut. Yes, it Ooh, does. Ooh, I love it. Okay. And let's see, chocolate walnut or chocolate pecan. Those are on the menu fairly often just because people like them yep. and they're fun to make. Um, cheesecake. We do a lot of cheesecake pies. Is that they, legal? Is that allowed to put cheesecake in a pie? No, but we don't as believe in we know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we do a lot of cheesecake pies, sometimes chocolate cheesecake or it'll be a berry cheesecake. Or Justin's been working on perfecting a Thai coffee cheesecake pie a thai iced coffee cheesecake thai iced coffee cheesecake with a like a cardamom cream sauce oh it's my gosh in a pie with your amazing crust absolutely oh that makes me very very happy okay so you said sweet pecan right yeah ding 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 that's where i have the bourbon oh bourbon and a slice of uh, sweet pecan well, pie i hate to tell you there's a little whiskey already in that pie uh, i'm emotionally available for that that's <laughs> okay. all right okay. i'm good okay okay and then you said a chocolate walnut pie Is chocolate that right? walnut yeah okay yeah. and are you familiar with stone barn brandy works they do in a chino a, a walnut liqueur okay. i think uh, we should do an event like maybe this fall where i have them come and i'll promote it and people can have their no chino and meet them and eat your chocolate walnut pie that sounds really fun that maybe yeah. some of your venison pie um yeah. for the savory that, that would be fantastic. Let's do it. Oh, I love it. Okay. Um, okay. And then dinner, um, you're going to be open for dinner as well, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then dinner, in addition to the pies that people can get, you know, from lunch forward, you'll also have some occasional just specials, like just a special oh, yeah, dinner thing. For sure. Um, since I love your mashed potatoes, any possibility fried ch- or baked chicken? Absolutely. Will happen. Okay. Um, <laughs> since I love comfort food, I suspect I've had a lot of bad meatloaf in my life. Uh, oh no, no, no! Justin makes very good meatloaf. You make good meatloaf. have good meatloaf, meatloaf in your loaf life. Meatloaf master. Okay. All right. <laughs> and then uh, a fun one that I'm excited about: um, macaroni and cheese pie. You put mac and cheese in the mac in the pie. Yeah, <laughs> you can, and we will. Oh, the crust and the pie. I'm ready for that. Okay. Now talk to me about this pastrami Swiss pie. Okay. Yeah. So that is another one of my favorites. It's it's quite a lot like a Reuben. Um, we do layers. So there's the Swiss, there's mushrooms, there's pastrami. It gets a little... No Thousand Island. No Thousand Island. Can I get, <laughs> no can I get that on the side? <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> we've actually made an au jus sauce. So maybe if it's a special, that's happened before where you can dip it. And that's pretty fun too. Is, so, that, is that a Thousand it, Island au jus? Uh, no. Because no. that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> um so that one's fun, though. We've done it both ways, where you can dip and where you can eat it just dry. It's delicious. Nice. And then you have a corned beef pie? What the heck is that? That is delicious as well. Um, that's a slow-simmered corned beef, got cabbage, potatoes. We've done that near St. Patrick's Day and oh. sold out way too quickly. I love time. me some good corned beef and um, uh, Lompoc. They have um, their pro... Um, Proletariat Red um, is fantastic. Their red ale is fantastic. Okay. I had that this fall. Uh, their beer and some corned beef. It was an amazing dinner. So keep that in mind. Which brewery was that? Lompoc. Oh. Lompoc, their Proletariat Red. Uh, and uh, Stormbreaker also. They're opening just down the street. They are. And their Mississippi Red. It's all, I love a good red beer and um, corned beef. To me, it just works. Huh. Uh, so keep That's them in awesome. mind. And okay. Stormbreaker, you know, maybe have them come do a uh, Mississippi Red when they have they do a barrel-aged version and have a special event here with that and your uh, corned beef pie. 
I'm thinking that works. Then you have to come up with some special dessert pie to go with that too. I don't know what that would be, but I suspect Justin, you're qualified to come up with an amazing thing that would I work. Hope so <laughs> I don't know if I could make room for dessert after the red in the in the pie, but oh come on, it's pie. We have to. I want. I don't want cheated. I want savory and sweet. Okay. We'll make it happen. And then um, you do you do seasonal pies? I assume. Like I love cranberry. Do you do anything with cranberry in a pie? Yeah. So right near Christmas time, we've done a lot of apple and cranberry pies, as well as we've done mince meat pies. That's pretty fun because a lot of people haven't eaten them before. Um, in fact, I hadn't eaten one until we opened the food truck, and I had a lovely lady who lived right behind it asking for mince meat pie. So I scoured the cookbooks and then came up with our own recipe. And can't wait to do it again. It's not for everyone, but I recommend at least giving it a try. No, yeah. it's it's yeah. fun. It's fun. It's kind of like, you know, chestnuts. You go to the Holiday Ale Fest, and if you've never had roasted chestnuts, they're good. And sometimes some people love them, some people don't. But at least you had them once. Yeah, yeah. but you have to try our mince meat pie because it's actually really good. Oh, I've had it. It's, it's good. Really good. It's good. <laughs> and I assume you do, like, seasonal stuff. Like, maybe you do a pumpkin pie? Oh, definitely. Pumpkin yeah. pies, strawberry rhubarb. Oh, uh, strawberry rhubarb. That is good. Yeah. Whatever. It is the season. Yeah. Budokat Winery does a, a rhubarb wine. Okay. All rhubarb that yeah. works. That's we interesting. recently had a rhubarb cider. Yeah, that, that was, was delicious. Fantastic. Uh, two towns. Yeah, two towns. So that would be fun to have that with the pie. I would it like would, that. Yeah. And it maybe would. you could do some kind of savory, I don't know, some kind of savory pie with rhubarb. I bet that would be good. Mm, I never even thought about that. Yeah, do a, do a rhubarb night event. I love events. I mean, yeah. I just right. think they're a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm excited for the menu, and it's uh, people, when they stop in, they can, so what's the pie today? And they can find out. They'll have some of the things that are always around, and then new stuff always, you always. know, whether it's August or October or June or, yeah. you know, January. So that's the fun thing about people to come here is it's always some wonderful, great pie, savory and sweet. Yes. Okay, so I'm always curious, you know, how people's journey started. So, Marika, where were you born? I was born in Santa Barbara, California. Oh, I love it. That is, uh, I spent a lot of summers there. And how about you, Justin? Where were you born? I was born in uh, Sutter Creek, California. Sutter Creek. Now, I took California State History growing up in school. Something's ringing a bell. Gold Rush. <laughs> that's, Gold Rush. It's, that's where it started, didn't that's it? That's where it started. <laughs> and uh, there are many ghost towns surrounding it. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but a California ghost town is fun. It is. It is. Okay. So um, and where did you guys meet? Well, we actually met each other when we were in junior high, but we didn't start spending time together till our mid-teens. So where in junior high? What high school? What junior high school? Uh, it was Oak Grove School. We were out on the patio, and I remember seeing Justin. And you thought, that's it. That's that's the man of my dream. No, Would not you? at all. <laughs> I thought, there's that kid with long hair. <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew what would happen to you. Yeah, ago. it's pretty funny when you think back like that. <laughs> okay, so probably what, seventh grade, ninth grade, both yep. of you at that time? Yeah, exactly. That sounds right. Okay, and then I know you moved around a lot, Justin, just I because did. of the investigations and all the FBI right. chasing yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But eventually you came back to uh, Ojai. I did. Uh, came back to Ojai, and then what, you were 17 and 19 when you met? Um, uh, met back up again? More, a little younger than that, but we actually started dating when we were 17 and 19. Okay, yeah. okay, so, and what, hung out for about six months and then started dating? Yeah, and exactly. then And then how long have you guys been together now? It's going to be 19 years on February 20th. So that's the date, that's the day of your first date. Yes, sir. It is. Where did you go? Uh, we just hung out. We <laughs> lived... <laughs> We You're lived teenagers. You don't actually go anywhere. <laughs> but it's so sweet that you remember the day. That is fantastic. Okay, so there's Ojai, and now you're in Portland. What brought you to Portland? You came to Portland, what, 2013? Yeah. So what brought you to Portland? So that's kind of a funny story. So we were actually in the talks, very serious talks, about opening a restaurant in California, in Ojai. And uh, it was going to be... Isn't that where Jamie Summers is from? I don't know. Yeah, Jamie Summers is the bonic woman, Lindsay Wagner, just so you know. I don't know if she's from there, but they did film parts of uh, of the show. I think in, that's in where her o parents live, was in Oh, Ohio. you're right, you're right. You actually yes. you know what? You're right. You are right. <laughs> and I'm terrible because I don't know who that is. That's okay. <laughs> she you're, she you're, grew up without TV. Yeah, you're, you're way too young. Don't yeah. worry about it. No, so. no. She doesn't... She, <laughs> she doesn't know who Mr. T is. Yeah, that's okay. We, no, we love you fun. anyways. <laughs> we do. Okay, so you're thinking, uh, so you had worked in restaurants. Yeah, we'd both in, worked in restaurants. And you'd been a chef, Justin, at restaurants. Yes. So you're thinking of seriously opening a restaurant in Ojai. We were just a few skips and a jump away from it. Okay. And we had this realization because we'd lived in Eugene a long while back, and we'd always loved the Pacific Northwest, and we have lots of friends up here. And we thought before we lock ourselves into Southern California with all the heat and everything else, let's go up to Portland and see if it's, you know, something we want to do. See how it feels. Yeah. And we got here, and it was weird because we actually felt like we came home. 
which was a very strange sensation. You came home for the first time. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty special. It's a really neat place. So then you said, since this is home, to heck with the restaurant, we're moving to we're moving home. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. I mean, but that's how beautiful, awesome the Northwest in Portland it is. is. It really is. Here. Yeah. Okay, so you gave up the dream of the restaurant and moved up here. In about five weeks. Wow. It was crazy. We turned around, there was room for kids in the school, like everything was perfect, and we just did it. Okay, and then you went back to waiting tables, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And that was in 13, and then what'd you, where'd you go, Justin? I started working uh, for a restaurant that was, uh, it sold last year, it was called Proper Eats. It was a vegan restaurant and uh, organic market. That's just here in St. John's. It, it was. Uh, it, it's now, they sold last year and it has become a homegrown smoker. Home, homegrown which smoker. Which is also uh, vegan. Yep, uh, homegrown smoker, vegan barbecue. Yep, he's yep. A, he's that wonderful, crazy man. Is a chapter in my first book, Portland Food Cart Story. So, <laughs> so excited to see him go brick and mortar. And now you guys are making. So you worked at. Uh, you really were a vegan chef. Oh yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I've worked in uh, vegetarian and vegan food for about over ten years. So that's uh, why that's why the vegan stuff is so amazing. It is. You know it, what you're doing. It is, and and I'm not vegan, nor am I vegetarian, but I I truly enjoy cooking in that capacity. Yeah, so do I. I'm not vegan or vegetarian, but yeah, these days I eat a lot of vegan, uh, particularly at home. Uh, helps me not you know, weigh 400 pounds, eating like this amazing food I'm about to eat in just a few minutes. Um, and I have great respect for really good vegan food. Okay, so 2013, you abandon the restaurant idea, you move here. 2014, you time to open a cart. Why did you open a cart? Well, we've always really wanted to have our own business, work for ourselves. So we thought that would be a much more manageable way to start, more financially possible, a little bit less crazy, a little less scary. It's an accessible way to start a brand. Exactly. Particularly a food brand. And was there the hope, either in the back of your mind or the front of your mind, that it would grow and you could open a restaurant? I think that every, every cart owner has that hope in the end. Um, I, I would hope so. Otherwise, uh, it's... It's hot in the summer and cold in the winter yeah, working in a, a car. It's a little brutal. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's very, bru it's very brutal. And you, you make so much incredible money. No, not really. Food court owners nope. tip them well. They struggle. People have no idea. And nope. it's truly a labor of love. Like, there's there's no other way to put it. <laughs> so, when I said, not, huh? so when I said, why a cart? And, uh, Marika, you said, um, you know, we've always wanted to be self-employed. Justin, your eyes lit up. So how long have you wanted to be self-employed? My entire life. <laughs> I, I just can't imagine any other answer so it's just right up your alley yes i love it Absolutely. okay yeah i think being self-employed is phenomenal uh, not for everybody but but if you're wired that way there's just no other way to live no okay and so uh 2014 you move here 13 you move home for the first time to portland open the cart in 14 and now four years later you're making the leap to brick and mortar um, how did it feel when your cart first opened and people showed up and started buying your pie it was pretty magical because i've dreamed even as a little child of serving my own food which was pretty special to finally get to do that is awesome. Okay, now, by the way, Pie Coo, you opened a pie cart. Why pie? Because I love pie. Oh, And good. Justin was fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the things I really, really appreciate is good crust. And you guys make amazing pie crust. What's the secret to good crust? Butter. Butter. <laughs> Although I have to say there's another secret ingredient, which most recipes won't tell you to use. Okay. And that's to throw an egg in your pie crust. Oh. And it's actually, it saves every batch. So you can be in a hurry, and you can still make pie crust, and all that wiggle room is an egg. Because your, your crust is perfect and stellar. Thank you. A and you also make, which is hard to do, you make really good vegan pie crust. Thank you. Scott, is there like a secret you can't tell us about there? Can you like hint oh, at it? You know, some really good oil. Okay, yeah, I know. Not, you, not canola not oil. Not canola oil. Okay, so the two little bits we get, because it's, you know, family secret, but um, <laughs> not canola oil and a really good oil. That's part of what makes a good vegan crust. Is yeah, that right? we also use whole wheat flour. In, in the in the uh, vegan crust, mm -hmm. it makes it a, it has a little bit more nutty flavor. Okay, yeah. I like it. Excellent. All right, so I'm gonna uh, try these pies. Which one should I start with? I think I'm gonna start with the Easter pie. I think that's a good way to go. Okay, so tell everyone who's never heard what is the Easter pie a real thing? Did you make it up? What? No, no, no. This is a real thing. It's a uh, Italian egg pie. I believe you eat it at Easter time. That's mm. <laughs> my gosh. I would assume. <laughs> uh, actually, there's a funny story behind it, which is our we both uh, a while back uh, worked for on and off for friends of ours that owned a coffee shop uh, for several years, and one of the owners. Uh, is Italian and he's from Upper State New York and every year his mother would make this Easter pie and ship it to him through regular mail and he would actually eat it four days later 
Um, wow. I know, which is a little risky in, in our opinion. Uh, so we decided we would make it for him. Uh, so he didn't have to 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 risk uh, food poisoning, <laughs> and we enjoyed it. So we we kept with it. Th- this is incredible. Okay, tell tell me again what's in an Easter pie? Okay, so each family has their own, and this is we do uh, salami from Olympia Provisions, ham from Olympia Provisions, uh, provolone, parmesan, uh, mozzarella. It's got hard boiled eggs. This is incredible. I, I, I want. I just want an IPA, and I want a whole bunch of this, and yeah. just to eat myself into a food coma. And the crust is thick and rich and crumbly and perfect. And it's not quite as heavy as it <clears throat> as it sounds either. Um, no, a lot of people are intimidated uh, because it sounds so rich and, and intense. But it's it's not uh, it's not quite uh, as. As no. food coma inducing as, as it sounds. <laughs> no, and I, you know, if you end up doing like a Sunday brunch, this should be in the brunch menu because I could have this pie for breakfast all the. I mean, I like pie for breakfast, but yeah. I, this is this is a phenomenal savory breakfast pie in my opinion. It's really good. Yeah, we before we opened the food truck, we used to make it every Easter <laughs> for brunch, and uh, then once the first Easter happened after we opened the food truck, we decided to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, now I'm going to, what's this? This is the um, uh, venison, venison shepherd's pie. Venison shepherd's pie. And your mashed potatoes look so phenomenal. What is this amazing cheese that's here on these? So that's an Irish cheddar. Mm. I just want to take a bath in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> I don't even need to get to what's underneath. <laughs> well, actually, oh, you, no, do. you do. You do. The venison's <laughs> pretty amazing. It's all slow simmered and... And, and so a shepherd's pie is, uh, you know, like a meat stew kind of, and mm-hmm. then mashed potatoes on top, right? Yeah, is that yeah. The, essentially. And if you look it up there, uh, yeah, you can do it with beef. You can do it with lamb. There's, you know, yeah, different options. I think, I think options. mutton was, is traditional, but... This, I, I love, this is like a real traditional stew flavor, rich. You've got the taste of the carrots. It's so hearty and fantastic. Well, and we were just excited that customers responded so enthusiastically to venison because a lot of people haven't tried it. Yeah, no, it's this is rich and wonderful. I mean, I know you know you, you want to sell them all year long, but man, give me a fall, cool fall day, and this and a glass of wine, and I will just be very happy. <laughs> or or like a, a, a you know a double IPA or a dark beer that would work too for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, my goodness. And these amazing mashed potatoes are what's going to be with some of your dinner specials, like when you do a baked chicken or a meatloaf, it'll be these same mashed potatoes? Definitely. And we'll be doing uh, veggie shepherd's pies as specials as well. So that'll be fun. Oh, nice. And yep, I bet, I'll bet, here's what I bet, I bet you can make really good vegan mashed potatoes, can't you? <laughs> I bet you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the trick. Get some wasabi, wasabi stems. I've been having wasabi mashed potatoes lately where you take the wasabi leaf stem and just cut it with kitchen shears like green onion, and it's incredible. Where, where would I go about getting wasabi? You can go to stems. Oregon Coast Wasabi. They have a farm okay. on the Oregon Coast. They're a local Portland-based company. I my did friend, not know that. My friend That's Jennifer amazing. owns it. Real wasabi, not the fake stuff yeah, they sell. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, real wasabi grown on the Oregon Coast, largest wasabi farm in the United States. Wow. It's right out by Pelican. And her so no, right so here. Not, not dyed horseradish. Not dyed horseradish. The real thing. Wow. Wow, and I you know check that out. the root is you know super expensive, the rhizome yeah, yeah, or the you know the, the plant stem. But you know she sells the leaves, the greens, and then the stems. And the stems I've had a lot lately in mashed potatoes and vegan mashed potatoes, and it's phenomenal. Oh, that's amazing. I, yeah, we'll have to try that. Okay, and then what the heck is this save or sweet pie that I'm about to get, I'm about to dig into here? So that's our mango blackberry pie, and that has sautéed. Uh, coconut and candy ginger it starts and then you add all the other ingredients and it's got a lot of punch it does i just want a gin martini with this (laughs) and then i'll just be happy (laughs) it's almost i mean it's not but it's almost a savory pie those flavors it's it's a heartier sweet pie for sure that's fantastic i don't think i've ever had a sweet pie that kind of has that that richness and it's 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 not complicated but it's got a lot of flavor going on yeah yeah, we, we try not to make any of our desserts overly sweet. Yeah. Um, just because it's it's much too common in our opinion to have something where it's it's just sugar. It's just a cloying sugar bomb, and yeah. you don't get any flavor. Nope. Right. Nope. No, but I'm tasting everything. I'm tasting the blackberry and the coconut and all the flavors. This is really good. And, of course, you've got your amazing crust. I love that you have a thick crust. It's just so good. <laughs> well, thank you. Mm. Okay. 
I just take a whole one of these home and just uh, I could live on this for three days. <laughs> there you go. Just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> well, and mango and coconut; those are pretty good for you. So. You know, and I'm tempted to like think of a cheese um, that would go with this. Um, right. Uh, black cabazola. I bet I could have with this. Uh, well, actually, we didn't talk about this yet. Is we're going to be doing charcuterie boards at the restaurant. We're going to be featuring cowbells. Well, they are going to be bringing us cheeses, and it's a neat company that's in Southeast nice. Portland. Yeah, so yeah. maybe your dream can come true. Yeah, I could put I could put you know one of those you know cheeses you know like a beer or something with this, and just be very happy. I know that probably sounds weird. I'm a nut, but I just think this would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, I, I can see that. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, Justin and Marika, it's so excited for you guys. I've made the leap to brick and mortar, and you're opening your own restaurant, and uh, excited to come and, and try all the dishes, and I'll, I'll have to come for breakfast, and I'll just have to come for lunch, and I'll have to come for dinner. Um, but I wish you all the best as you open here in St. John's. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. We really appreciate you coming out. We do. Uh, they're going to they're, they're gonna be lucky to have you. <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll be lucky to have them. <laughs> all right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.